what a way to begin the day with Pluto and Goofy over there. It's, I'm about to check out a pop century and they're saying goodbye. I had a great stay, fellas. Thanks for everything. Welcome everyone, Adam the Woo here, checking out of Pop Century. But I'm still staying in Central Florida until the end of the month, maybe into the first of January into 2021. There still will be peppered in Disney theme park content, but not today, however, or the next series of days later, later in the month. Today I'm gonna to be roaming around International Drive. Might go up in the former Orlando Eye, also now currently called the Icon Orlando, and just see what there is to see. Roam around, see some sights, sounds, and smells of Orlando. I'm inviting you to join me, shall you? While on the commute, stopped off at Hotel Way, Hotel Boulevard, that leads into Disney Springs, and the Amateur Athletic Union. This is one of the first buildings on WDW property. Prior to 1971, this was the original. Oh, look, I'm seeing the balloon over there. The balloon is up at Springs. Dang it. This was the preview center for Disney World. And eventually became Walt Disney World. His brother Roy wanted to, wanted to honor Walt. So they put his name in the front. Before anyone knew what to expect, before any rides, hotels, attractions, or other facades were built, locals, because there weren't a lot of tourists, would walk inside here. Still looks the same. Oh, by the way, Dylan Theme Park Obsession is with me. I'm gonna show him some of the little, little history around here, and we're gonna go up in the... You ever been up in the Ferris wheel? No, I haven't done any of that. You'll be able to see for miles and miles. Pretty neat, I've showed this before in the past, but it's been a few years. Always nice to stop off and, and see it again. And another photograph, it used to be a dirt road, open daily from nine to five. The only indication of what this property would be was Disneyland, which a lot less acreage. No one realized the world that it would become. Took I-4 a ways, a few miles, and have arrived at this apartment complex next to Lake Eola, known as Post Parkside. But back in the day, this is where Walt and Roy announced, along with the governor of Florida at that time, to the world and news media that there would be a Disney World. Back then, it was called the Florida Project, right here in this very building. And they would have walked right in. They would have got out of their car, walked in that very door on the end down there. It's neat. There's a tiki bar, kind of like you kind of get the vibes of the tiki room, and there's a not World of Disney, it's World of Beer down at the end, but you know, I'll, I'll kind of kind of tie it in as well. There was a nice sized banner across the way there that said, Welcome Walt Disney. And the press conference took place at the bottom floor, right inside that, I still have my magic band on, even though I'm not going to the parks, inside that very door right there. All sitting at the desk with the news media, Florida welcomes Walt Disney. I have showed all these spots, these last two spots before in the past, but always good to, to restop off. It's been a few years. Good to see the building still exists in some fashion. Nice little skyline here. This is next to that same building, uh, Lake Eola, with the fountain, the majestic fountain there in the middle, and uh, some of the buildings, the little skyscrapers down here. Oh, check this out, the payphone. Oh, it's not a payphone, it's a payphone. But there's an ATM inside of, this area is called, Thornton Park, and this is a parking garage here. I went with a caramel brulee latte, a piping hot beverage. Oh, that is, that is warm. From the, that's a lot of those little Razor scooters. Are those Razor scooters, is that what they're called? I think so, they're they're like these electric, they're, there's like a bunch of different companies, like Bird, and then you, Bird. Just, you just rent them on your on your phone and you cruise around. Where'd you get to, Where'd you, what are you consuming? I got a banana nut loaf. Mm -hmm and a pumpkin cream cold brew. They still have the pumpkin flavoring left over from uh, the fall. Nice. One of my favorites. Let's get over to iDrive now. Oh yeah. See some sights. Enough history. Let's do some touristy things. A few different ones. The bird you mentioned, but also razor and spin. You don't really see these in LA too much anymore. They kind of, oh, there's a few even, a few more over there on that corner. What's your first impression of downtown Orlando versus LA? 
Oh, I like this better. I mean, like uh, downtown LA has its has its pros and, and cons and stuff too. But like this one, it's more spread out. It's quiet. A little more mellow. More mellow for sure, which is like more my speed. And like, there's a lot of beautiful architecture around here too. While en route, wanted to point out this staircase. If you've ever seen Ernest Saves Christmas, one of the scenes took place right there on that staircase. The car just turned off. <laughs> up this road. <laughs> it's where he's walking up. He's dressed as a woman and says, these stairs might as, might as well be Mount Everest. The helicopter flying by there. This is Deserland. Years ago was the Fashion Square Mall then became the Artagon Mall, and now it is not open, but the, the rumors are that there is quite a collection of classic cars and screen-used movie paraphernalia inside here. Let's see if I can get a little closer. Now, the last time I was wandering this property was back in July and was told I was not allowed to film. They had the front blocked off, but there is no stanchions at the entry point. And it looks like it's completely accessible now and the murals are finished. It's also interesting that there is a hamburger and fries over here painted on the wall in the corner because that's where a Fuddruckers used to be. Maybe that's like a little homage now that the, the Fuddruckers has been removed. There's James Bond. I believe that is Connery. Ash! Ash! I like that. Nicely done. There's Tomater, the entry point. Really hope this opens at some point. I'd like to go inside. You always see tow trucks as this character of Mater from Cars. Are there any other tow trucks that are non-Maters? I can't think of any. Oh, dang. There's Santa over there next. It, this place might be open. It might be open currently. I see, I see jolly old Saint Nick. And Marilyn Monroe on the hood of that other vehicle. I'm peeking through the window. Check the door. It was locked, at least on that side. No signage for an opening date. But there were people in there getting ready for something. Coming back up on, got to turn onto I Drive once again. Just tough to believe that many years ago, the way I remember this area was as wet and wild. Now it's a Universal Studios offsite hotel. Good to see this DeLorean still parked here in front of George's Music. Gotta love a classic twisty treat. Ice cream cone that you can walk up to and get a soft serve. This almost resembles hub grass right here. But I'm not focusing on that. I want to focus on this alien creature that has been in front of Bargain Planet for quite some time. And the Whirly Dome, which went out of business about a year ago, has been transformed into something called Bronze Kingdom. A giant UFO. My apologies for the noise. Do a little cleaning of the parking lot. This has been overlaid a number of times. Looking across the way there, there's a lighthouse and standing by that door appears to be a football player of some sort as well kind of guarding the door. It is just about 1 p.m. The, the big wheel does not open until afternoon at once, so a few minutes until, good thing to check the hours because we wasn't sure it wasn't moving. Even though it's slow moving, it is not shifting around, but it will be just a few moments. So we're gonna make our way to the courtyard and then inside, get tickets and head to the tippy top of this magnificently gargantuan wheel. I can still remember back when they were building this, I would visit town and I would see it kind of taking shape from the interstate. Going up now, we have boarded into our pod and heading sky high. Really can't get a great perspective of everything up here. Convention center off in the distance over there. Zoom in on the coasters of SeaWorld. Universal Orlando. 
Now, Dylan, you might know more than I do on this, but isn't this where Universal, Epic Universe will be? Is it called Epic Universe? Yeah, Epic Universe will be right there. It's, uh, it's going to be a very large theme park. Right down in this grassy area, right? I think right now, no. Oh, it's going to be, oh, over there. Yes, all that dirt is for the park going. Congratulations for owning the sky like a true Orlando dreamer from 400 feet in the air. 400 feet up. Okay, I said, okay, it's over there. See, I thought it was going to be down here. Okay, I was completely incorrect in my assumption. on top of each other. Wow, okay. Just about reach the top. There's the courtyard down there. And over there is Disney property off in the distance. Oh, wait, there's that balloon at Disney Springs that's up in the air. That thing's always teasing me. And I believe that is Fun Spot, one of the two. There's one in Kissimmee Old Town, but that's the Orlando Fun Spot over there. It's a big bear, though. And now heading about a block or two up to Chewy's. One of my favorite spots here along I Drive. So close, in fact, it is within with an eye view of the wheel over there, the parking lot. We could have walked, but we just decided to, to get in the rental and drive over. Very Elvis thing. Now, these are all over the place, not just here in Central Florida, but there's Elva, Elvis everywhere, in, inside, outside. It, you have to, you really can get the Elvis vibe. Now, I've eaten here before, but this is the first time I've ever ordered the fajitas. I went with the chicken and beef fajita platter. I believe it was... $16.99 with all the the additives there with the, the salsa sour cream cheese lettuce and Dylan what did you get you got a burrito of some sort yeah I got the ground beef burrito and it came with a little bit of rice and oh it was really good it comes with refried beans inside and look, oh, at, look at all that steam starting to, to flow off the top of it it's fogging up the camera at the crossroads of International and Sand Lake used to be what they refer to as the world's largest McDonald's, and then they changed the name to Epic McDonald's. Now it's just a, a larger than usual McDonald's, but I want, want to walk over there. They do have something on the second floor I want to point out. But I also recall over in this parking area, many years ago they stated they were going to build the world's largest and tallest roller coaster. I might be off on that, but I believe it was going to be right over there where that Perkins sign is and that crab on the top of the billboard, but I haven't heard anything about that in many years. Maybe that got scrapped and is not happening anymore. It was going to be kind of just its, its own little entity over there. I wonder what happened. The Skyplex Entertainment Complex and the coaster was going to be called Skyscraper. Uh, I believe it went out of, like, the, the company that does it either went bankrupt or they scrapped the project entirely because of its cost. So we will not be having a gigantic coaster here on this corner. No, because it would have been 500 feet tall. That's, that's a few million dollars in itself plus the structure, so they, yeah, it was probably too expensive. With the signage wedged in a couple of fast food establishments, good to see Hogan's Beach Shop still going strong. Used to be a an old 7-Eleven that was repurposed. And when you step inside, there are a few full-size, life-size Hulk Hogan's Hollywood, also Thunderlips in the flesh from Rocky III. Check it out, it's not Jimmy Hart ringside, but it's Ghostface from Scream. Oh, I almost forgot about No Holds Barred. I always think of Rocky III, but No Holds Bar is another. There is a lot of movies that he played on. Oh, he did Thunder in Paradise. That one, Santa with the Muscle. Santa with the Muscle. That is funny, I totally forgot about Jingle All the Way with Arnold. Hogan was the Santa, he was in disguise, but it was clearly Hulk Hogan. And as I stated a moment ago, inside McDonald's, there's a, there's a very large Ronald there on the side. I'm not gonna talk about Ronald on the second level. You go up the stairs, Mr. Mac tonight will be singing at his piano. Singing a few tunes for those who are enjoying, you know, their soda or burger. I was being very patient up there, waiting, waiting for Mac to sing. He never did. He just uh, just was sitting still. But that's fine. At least I got to see him with my own eyes once again. We're being escorted this way. Be careful. Oh, thank you. Thank you. They just, they just went across. Thank you, $50 for your shoes. Thanks, man. 
Thank you. That's going to do it for today. If you're new here, please subscribe. By doing so, it helps keep you in the loop. Up to date on future uploads here on this channel. If you enjoyed this particular episode, give it a big thumbs up. It lets me know you care. I'll see you in the next video. The vlog is over.